Greetings, gamer guys and gals. Welcome to part 15 of my Let's Play Pokemon Scarlet. And today we have a little bit of a detour we're going to be going on because I have been given some spoiler free information that the Pokemon Center near the desert at Cascarafa, you really want to talk to this guy right here, this league representat representative, and then you want to take on his challenge. So we're going to do just that. Hello there. I'm a Pokemon League rep. Been having some nice Pokemon battles. So far you've defeated zero trainers here in the Asada Desert. Once you defeat five trainers, you'll get a lovely prize. So obviously his prize is going to be a TM, but what it is, I know not, as it is a bit of a spoiler-free situation. So we're going to be looking for five trainers in the Asado Desert and doing just that. <clears throat> However, before we get on to that, I actually have a little bit of a uh, surprise. In my travels, I was doing a little bit of uh, going and buying some stuff, and I decided to get a Miracle Seed and a Razor Claw. Uh, that's given Hell item. Alright, so the Razor Claw is that critical hit ratio increaser, so we will have 50% critical chance with all of Veluza's critical hit buffing moves, which we only have two right now, and one we're definitely not keeping, that being Slash, but <clears throat> we do have Aqua Cutter, we do have, uh, we're, we're going to be getting one soon, I believe, um, actually a couple soon. And we are definitely going to be keeping those for sure. Making sure to have all the moves we need to buff up and be used with the ability. Uh, well, with the item. Uh, not the ability because we don't have sharpness and I have no way to get the hidden ability of this Pokemon. Not really concerned about it either. <coughs> <clears throat> Gosh, man. Alright, so without further ado, we're going to get right into some trainer battles. We just need to do five. I've got 20 years of studies at the Academy under my belt. <laughs> you are challenged by Lewis, the student. So I'm guessing this Academy isn't just for children, because otherwise... Uh, we've got some strange academy dwellers. Alright, so we're going to just go ahead with a good old seed bomb. Masculine fainted. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and switch, actually. We're going to switch to Toros. I don't remember what it said he was going to be throwing out. But Tauros needs experience points anyhow. Oh, and a Ponyard. Okay. So this was a very good switch. I did not at all remember that. Okay, Defiant. So his attack is risen by one stage. We're going to double kick. That's uh, quad effective. Ooh, and one hit out of that double kick worked. And that's it. 20 years for this. At least we got some decent prize money. Uh, tell us where your friends are. We need to uh, defeat four more of you. Um, let's hope we find them soon. Because otherwise this is probably going to take up the majority of this episode. If not all of this episode. Uh, I've been told that it is incredibly worth it, so that if you do happen to find yourself in the Asado Desert, you might just want to um, take a stop, a pit stop, ooh, Nightshade, cool, and go ahead and do just this. So this is going to be battle number two. What do you think will happen if sand gets into my shoes? You are challenged by Ismail, the student. 
sent out Clauncher. All right, so our Pokemon are a little bit higher level than his at this moment, which kind of stinks. Um, we're actually going to switch out um, Florigato as our party lead for Tauros after this battle, because I would like Tauros to get some levels to catch up with the group. And you do get more experience points for being at the front of the party. Maybe I'll just go bury my head in the sand. Well, at least you're giving me money first. Alright, so... Hopefully we can find a bunch around this rock. Maybe over here. I'm not entirely sure exactly where everybody is. In this uh, wonderful, wonderful desert. But we are going to keep our eyes peeled. And hopefully fi Ooh, Fire Fang. It's always a lovely move to have. Hopefully find our combatants very soon. Another Larvesta. Gosh, if it wasn't for the fact that I want to use nothing but new Pokemon, I would probably pick you up. Larvesta, Volcarona, one of my favorite bug type Pokemon of all time. I would say I've changed my mind a bit because it used used to be even not very that not that long ago was definitely um, Shedinja and the Ninjask line, but I would have to say Volcarona is kind of a bit cooler because Shedinja is awesome if you can get his ability to work for you. Otherwise, he's a real liability. Liability. There was a weird Pokemon. There was a weird Pokemon. You are challenged by Renardo the Scientist. And he's got a good old muck. Alright, so we're going to have to use Flame Charge here, probably. With Stab, this move is slightly better than Headbutt. Though Headbutt does have the 30% chance to uh, flinch. All right, evasion rose sharply. That could be a problem. It wasn't, but it could have been. <laughs> the opposing Grimer fainted, not Muck. I saw a weird Pokemon, I swear. I'll tell you more in a bit. Oh, he gave us a pretty decent amount of uh, experience points there. All right, not experience points, money. Uh, that would happen to probably be the Great Tusk Titan. From from what I know and understand, I am probably not high enough level to fight that dude. We're going to steer clear from that Titan. In fact, our next area is probably going to be a Starfall Street operation. So that was battle number three. We need two more battles. And there we go, a good old revive, a stardust. We are becoming slowly very rich in items and materials and whatnot. I've got a guitar that doesn't make a sound! You are challenged by Claudia the Musician. Ah, so a Deerling. We're going to have a bit of a type advantage here. Awesome. I'm a real big fan of the fact that Tauros has gotten some uh, love this generation. Especially considering that he's not really gotten love since Gen 1. I mean, he did get the Anger Point and Intimidate abilities, which are both very interesting. But not really great. I mean, Intimidate's fantastic, but it definitely hasn't changed the fact that he's still, you know, a normal type. And one of the better normal types, granted, but not, like, great. All right, body slam, don't paralyze. Ooh, okay, it did not, so that's good. 
and our good old flame charge, we defeated your wiggly tough. Not that cool of a Pokemon in my opinion. I'm as victorious as my guitar is loud. Uh, agreed. Um, I'm actually a bigger fan of... Okay, so that was number four. We just need one more Pokemon battle. I'm a far bigger fan of the fighting type only variant of Tauros because there is a fighting fire, a fighting water, a regular fighting type, and a normal type. I don't know if you can get the normal type in this gen, but I think the fighting type is the coolest. And part of that has to do with just the fact that fighting types are amazing. Uh, it, they're one of the best offensive types in all of Pokemon, and that is actually due to the fact that Fighting has five super effective hits. One of those being the pesky normal types. The only other type that has five super effective hits is ground. So, that's pretty wild. And this is number five. Why is the great creator of P Paldea off limits, I wonder? You are challenged by Gregorio, the Pokey Maniac. Very interesting clothing. I wanted to say that about the Pokemaniacs we were fighting I Iono's gym, but uh, I just did not uh, think to at the time. Intimidate, I don't think that actually is useful in this fight. Double kick. Yeah, Dratini, a level 22 Dratini. This, these Pokemon trainers are actually a fair bit under leveled in my opinion. Considering that the gym we fought was definitely higher level than this. All the way up to level 30, in fact. Guess if a kid can beat me, I'm better off not going anywhere dangerous. I would have to agree. I would definitely have to agree. Alright, so we're going to fly back to this spot. We have five Pokemon trainers beaten in this area. That means we're going to be able to get our little prize or reward, and maybe it's not so little. Who knows? Hello there! I'm a Pokemon League rep. Ah, I've defeated five. On behalf of the Pokemon League, here's your lovely prize. Earthquake! What? We're holding this challenge for other areas. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Yes, that was totally worth it. Now we have the ability to craft it, too. Um, I wonder what it requires. Oh, the problem is, is we only have one Pokemon that can learn it. I was hoping Cloth could learn Earthquake. But hey, we're going to use it. We are definitely going to use it. Uh, getting rid of Headbutt. I mean, it's still a good move, but hello, Earthquake. All right, so let's see what we have in order to craft Earthquake. Um, ground is right after Poison, TM149, uh, Fanfi Nail, Diglett Dirt, and Barboach Slime. So I would need to defeat some Barboach if I want to craft, craft it again, which, I mean, it's not really useful because if I could teach it to both Cloth and our good friend Tauros there, I would probably go and hunt down some Barboach for this because then it would be, you know, amazing. Uh, Mud Slap, Bulldoze, ooh. Cloth does learn Bulldoze though. We could try to get some, like, Sandy Ghast. I almost want to say that this is, this would be useful to learn um, on Cloth. Just because Cloth would really love a ground type move, considering that uh, ground would kind of be some of his weaknesses. Consider definitely steel. I mean, that's a very considerate weakness. We don't necessarily need every Pokemon on our team to have total type synergies and the ability to just like blow away everything. But hey, you know. <laughs> if you can, you can. Now, am I going to do it right now? Hmm. No, I don't think I am. 
Uh, what we're going to do, though, is we're actually going to go beat another Team Star position. Um, the Poison one. Now, it looks like it's a bit offshoot, like we're going out of our way for this. But the problem is, is that I don't know that we're necessarily ready for another gym immediately since we just beat a gym. Um, and we don't really have any Titans to go after because there's only two left. That being the this Titan and this Titan. And from my understanding, this is probably going to be the most difficult Titan. So the idea here would probably be to beat these two next. Um, I don't necessarily believe the order matters, but I am going to go to Poison. Because it just seems like it would be a bit easier than doing another gym. So we are going to do just that. We're going to set as Destination. And then we're going to fly to the closest area by it. Or by him. Um, and then we're going to find our way over there problem is, though, our closest way to get there is, like, maybe LaVincia? Um, we could take that road. Yeah, it's probably LaVincia. Um, yeah, and then through this, like, area here into Starfall. Yeah, I th it's probably gonna be here. So we're gonna fly here, and we're going to f probably cap off this episode with a little bit of traveling. And then uh, we're going to, you know, get on over there. Now, I do have a Psychic Pokemon, but my problem is that our very own Psychic Pokemon... Ooh, you know what? Veluza, how close are you to leveling up? Not too far away. We might actually take on some, some trainer battles, being honest, because uh, if we could get to level 30 with Veluza, I think... That's when Veluza learns Aqua Cutter. Don't know for a fact. Um, but we could try that out. Alright. Let's get moving. Um, since we want Veluza to be level 30 right quick, we're going to actually put him in the front of the party. I see a wild Pokemon trainer. Oh, ho, 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 you bought it. My fake out, that is. Now it's battle time. <laughs> okay. You are challenged by Ernesto, the student. Point Cologne. And we brought out our very own beautiful Veluza. Very cool, honestly, like a very cool looking Pokemon. There's probably a lot of people out there who would disagree with me on that, but I think, I think Veluza looks really cool. Point Cologne use Dig. It's kind of unfortunate that that's uh, the case. I don't really, I don't have any ground immune Pokemon. That is something I try to do, is have a ground immune Pokemon in my teams, but this time around I just did not do so, and it's uh, a little bit unfortunate. And Dig shouldn't do that much damage. Veluza has great defenses. Alright, come on crit. And yes, 50% chance. That means half my moves are going to crit. Well, the critical moves, that is. Veluza wants to learn Fill It Away. Oh, come on. That kind of stinks. All right, so we are going to get rid of Slash for this. Actually, you know what? We're going to get rid of Aqua Jet for this. We don't really need priority. Or do we? Do we want priority? Nah, I think we're going to go ahead and get rid of Aqua Jet for this. Um, but, fill it away. The user sharply boosts its attack, special attack, and speed stats by using its own HP. So it's half HP rounded down. Half your HP is used to sharply boost those stats. It's basically Shell Smash without the downside of the defenses being lowered. 
but with the downside of your HP being lowered. It's a signature move of Veluza, and I am definitely excited for it. Just kind of very unfortunate because that means that it's most likely level 35 or 40 that I get Psycho Cut, so we don't really have very many options to defeat the poison. Um, yes, we are going to switch Pokemon uh, to, to defeat the poison um, Starfall Street. And Tauros. Go for it. Oinkalone. Why would you have two of those? Alright, so let's use our very own double kick. It's not gonna KO, unfortunately. Oh wait. He was still in the green. How'd that KO? Uh, it must have been like range, because I know there's your your moves can do 15% plus or minus damage, so I guess that's that's the case. So that little joke really cost me. Yeah, it kind of did, didn't it? All right, so now that that's the case, we found that out. We're actually going to switch back Tauros in the front of the party, and we're gonna skip out on doing any more trainer battles because we only just wanted to do enough so that we could level up with Veluza. I'm definitely not grinding to level 50. How dare you, Silly Cobra, getting in my way like that. And we're obviously going to run, because what's the point of this fight? Yeah, it's actually funny. My Tauros has such a unfortunate uh, stat spread concerning the nature. It's such an unfortunate spread. All right, so, oh, that's why you watch where you're going while you're driving. Roly Coley. Uh, absolutely love Colossal as a rock type Pokemon. Rock Fire is a cool typing combination and his ability Steam Engine is beautiful. All right, so we have a long way to go, like an actual long way to go. We want to go that way, probably, and then go through. Alright, let's pay attention to the road a little bit. Ah, I thought I was far enough away from that Q-Font. Yeah, that's the only unfortunate thing about Intimidate as, a, as an ability, is if you're doing, like going through the wild, every time your Pokemon is out that has Intimidate, bam, it has to be used, it has to go through the text. And that can get a little bit irksome at times. It's obviously not enough for me to say that it's a bad ability, for sure, but it is still something that you, you, you say, well, you know, that does kind of get bothersome. Yeah, we're skipping all of you, folks. Let's, uh... Let's climb up this, shall we? There might be something up here. And there is. We got Sandstorm. Not all that useful. At least not for the team I have or the Pokemon I have. And we get to go all the way up here. What's this? Is there going to be a third level? Okay, experience candy medium. Love the music in this game. Gotta say. Max Elixir. A medicine that can be used to fully restore your PP. Okay, so... There's a Gimme Ghoul here. I do want to catch this. I do not plan on, plan on using a Gimme Ghoul on my team, but I am definitely going to catch this for later. Let's catch him with a Quick Ball. And that's a critical catch. And got him. Gimme Ghoul was caught. Ah, 
Awesome. Not going to be adding him to my party. I would... I like Gimme Ghoul, but the problem is, is that the... The, um, evolving of this Pokemon is a little bit of a problem. Um, let's put him in here. Competitive. Because I might be using him as, like, competitive Pokemon. Um, bag. Let's go with, see our items here. Gimme Ghoul... I want to see how many coins that just gave us. Gimme Ghoul coin. We have 54 Gimme Ghoul coins? You need 999 to, to evolve a Gimme Ghoul. Not gonna lie, I think that's way over the top unnecessary. Unless I just got like 54 from that one battle. Because if that's the case, then it's not really all that incredibly difficult. Still, I would say it's kind of like... It's, a, it's grindy. And that's the reason why I'm not using him on my team. Because I actually think Gimme Ghoul, um, his evolve form is amazing. Absolutely amazing. One of, if not the... what One of, if not the best ghost Pokemon this gen introduced. Like, no doubt in my mind whatsoever. Um, and we're getting pretty darn close. Let's go ahead and stop by this Pokemon Center just so we can heal up. All right. And so we're, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to go into our team setup here and, uh, let's see, poison. Um, we got to go to boxes for this. I want to say... I wish we had a psychic type move with, with Veluza. I really do. Um... It's going to be kind of a bit of a shame here. Ah, uh, shoot. Let's do this um, for our setup for this area. But I think this is a perfect opportunity to go ahead and call it quits for the day. Uh, for this episode, that is. I want to thank you for joining me, and if you like my content, please upvote and follow or like and subscribe depending on your platform and comment and share you know would be wonderful to hear from you and while you're at it have a great and glorious day gaming